CINAHL is a great database to search when you're looking for issues related to the communication sciences and disorders. CINAHL stands for the Cumulative Index of Allied Health and Nursing. And now you know why everyone uses the acronym. We're going to cover how to run a basic search and a beyond the basic search, how to use the limiters, and how to use CINAHL headings. CINAHL is wonderful because you can search it in so many different ways, but it can also be confusing for the exact same reason especially for those of you just starting out. I'm going to show you a few different ways to search and you can use a method that works for you. There are several ways to get to the CINAHL database. We will start off by just going to our resources by subject, selecting speech language pathology, and then CINAHL is right here on the first page. The first way we're going to search is to just put a word or two into the search box that matches our topic. I'm going to look for information on the use of alternative, augmentative communication for children with autism spectrum disorders. So, I'm just going to type in alternative, augmentative communication and autism. Honestly, this isn't a very good search, but we're going to use some of the tools within CINAHL to make it much better. First, you're going to want to browse through the initial results. We only have 10 here. That's not that much. We definitely want to have more than that. But even a less than stellar search will usually bring up one to two articles that are close to what you want. Let's see if any of these sort of match my search. It looks like number three will be a pretty good match. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the link. This is the individual journal articles record. There's a lot going on on this page. There is a really long title. You have all the authors listed, where they come from, the source information, which is the journal, and all the details about that, what sort of publication type, what language it is. The one thing you're really looking for here is the major subject. These are the subject headings that have been assigned to this journal article. They represent what the article's about. They don't always match what you type in, and sometimes they can be a little weird, but you can use these to expand your search. Just click on one that matches your topic. They don't use the term alternative augmentative communication. They seem to be using the term communication aids for disabled. So in order to search on that, all I have to do is click on the link. Okay, this brings up 669 articles that are classified under the communication aids for the disabled. Now that's only searching on one of my concepts. To search on the other one, autism, I'm going to go ahead and go back to that original article. Now they have the subject heading autistic disorder. They also have what's called a subheading or something that focuses that of psychosocial factors. I don't really want that aspect of the search so I'm just going to click on autistic disorder. Okay, that brings up over 7,000 articles on just autistic disorder. But that is searching just on autistic. It's not incorporating the communication aids for the disabled. Now we want to combine our searches. This is one of the things I like the most about CINAHL is that it's very visual and it's really easy to combine and work with your searches. They have this section here at the top that's called their search history and alerts. It will list out everything you've searched on can be really handy, especially if you start to get lost in your searches or you want to combine any searches. So I want to combine my communication aids for the disabled and autistic disorder. To do that, I just have to click in the check boxes next to each term and I get the option of to search with and, to search with or, or delete searches. I definitely don't want that. To search with or is asking the database just to look for either autistic disorders or communication aids for the disabled, not where they appear together. If you want articles where the both of them appear together, you want to search with AND. Okay, that expands our search a little bit from our original 10 to 34. That's still not a ton, but at least it's a few more. The next step is to either look through what you want. When you only have 34 articles, you certainly can look through all of them. Or you can actually go to the side on the left hand side they have all of the limiters. If you want to apply any of those now you can, but again with just 34 you generally don't need to. Okay, so that is search method number one where we start with some keywords or words that we come up with, find a good article, and then build our search with the subject headings from that article. It's not a bad way to search but it can be a little complicated, right? Let's try another method, searching using the CINAHL headings. CINAHL has a great searching feature called CINAHL headings. 
These are the subject headings that CINAHL uses to categorize the articles in the database. You can actually search these using just keywords or the words that you come up with. In order to get to this database, you just have to come up to the top and click on CINAHL headings. Now you can type in any term that you want to. Let's say I want to look into stuttering. I'm just going to type in stuttering. Now nothing came up for stuttering, but something did come up for fluency disorders. That means that CINAHL doesn't use the word stuttering as a subject heading. They actually classify it as fluency disorders. If you're not sure if that's actually the term that you want, you can come over here to the little yellow note. This is called a scope note. Click on that and it will tell you what this term encompasses. So yes, that does look like stuttering would be included in that. But to actually go back and search on it, and all you need to do is click the little box next to the term and we're going to move from left to right. From here you can choose to explode. This is not an option in our case, but if there were more specific terms within fluency disorder, clicking on the explode term would search those. You can also search where it's the major concept, which can be handy if your search is very broad, but generally I don't select that at first just because it can over narrow my search. This last option over here on the far right is one of the reasons I love searching in set all headings because you can limit to subheadings which can really make your search so much more specific and focused. There are a lot of subheadings here and some of them aren't going to make a lot of sense for some of your terms. We are actually going to look just on the therapy. That's going to be one of the ones you'll use the most. All right, so I selected the subheading therapy that shows up here in my search term. All I need to do now is search the database. Now I have 487 articles that are specific to fluency disorders and the therapy of fluency disorders. All right, so this search brought up quite a few more than our last one, so this is when you'd start applying some of the limiters that are here on the left-hand side. A limiter is something that makes your search more specific. It gives you less results, which sometimes can be a good thing because you definitely don't want to go through 487 results. So let's say the first one I want to do is I want it only within maybe the last four years. Okay, we've limited it by date. You can also limit it to, let's say we only want academic journals. You can limit to major headings. Again, those are some of the subject headings. You can limit to a particular journal, a particular age, which can be really handy if you want. These are the primary uh, limiters, but there are additional ones. If you click on show more, you can limit to, let's say we only want preschool. Let's update that. We went from several hundred results down to 16 just by clicking a few limiters over on the left hand side. If you ever get to the point where you have too few results, then you can start going in and clicking on the little blue X's and those will take your limiters out. Okay, so our second method was to search using the CINAHL headings. This is a pretty easy way to search and it's fairly intuitive. The final search method is to go to the advanced search. Now just because it's called advanced search doesn't mean that you can't do it. Sometimes the advanced search is actually easier to use. In this case you have multiple boxes so you can separate out your search terms. And then you have all these options down here. That's a lot to choose from. I'm just going to point out the ones that will be most helpful for you. The only one I'll focus on here on the left hand side is the special interest. You'll see if you scroll down that there is a special interest category for speech language pathology and audiology. This means that we could run a search on any topic, say stroke, and the database will only bring up articles on stroke that have been classified as fitting into the SLP or audiology category. Pretty cool. On the right hand side, you can limit to year. So let's say we want the last 10 years. You can limit to a particular publication if you're, there's just one journal that you want to search. You can select peer-reviewed, very nice option as many of your professors specifically ask you to look for peer-reviewed. There are certainly a lot of other things, a particular journal subset, languages, you can limit to men or women, you can limit to inpatients, age group is really handy. Let's say we're looking on stroke and we want it in maybe younger adults, 19 to 44 years old. 
You can even limit to the number of pages. And I think that's all I'll limit for now. I will go back up, I'll type stroke in here, and we'll search. If you look over here on the left hand side, it tells you how you've searched, what you've searched, and how you've searched. In this case it says I have searched on stroke, it shows me all of my limiters, and in the middle section we have 253 articles. That's a good amount, but it's not a huge number to have to go through. And chances are you'll find what you want on the first few pages anyway. The final step in a CINAHL search is looking through what you find to select the articles that will work for your research. CINAHL has a feature where you can add things to a folder, which can help you keep track of your information. So you look for the articles that look relevant, click on the little blue folder, and this will add things to your CINAHL folder. To get to those, back to those items, scroll back up to the top, and you'll see something here that says Folder Has Items. From here you can go to a folder view. This shows me everything that I have in my folder so far. From here you can print out these, you can email them, you can save them, or you can export them if you're using some sort of reference manager. Just make sure you do something with these before you close your browser and stop searching. Even if you close your browser for just a second and come back in, everything will be gone. This is heartbreaking. Another way to save these items, besides emailing them, printing them, or saving them, is to create an EBSCO account. To do this, you can click on sign in here, or you can sign in here, and from here you can create a new account. This account will work as long as you're an ISU student, and it will keep everything as long as you're an ISU student. This is a very good way to keep track of what you're searching for. We've just covered a few different methods to search the CINAHL database, and also how to organize your searches in the CINAHL database. Please contact me if you have any questions about using CINAHL. I know it's not super easy to use when you first get started, and it can be a challenge. I'm happy to help.